Take the Quran which is far superior and I'm trying to prove to you what your yashtik has mentioned today, Quran has mentioned 14 years ago. So with the help of your yashtik, the science, I'm trying to prove to the non-Muslims that the Quran is the last and final revelation of Almighty God who we call as Allah. For more details, refer to my video cassette, Is the Quran God's Word, in which various ways I've proved that Quran is the Baby, you can call me a superman. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your boy Jesse Keegan. And your girl Fanny Lungo. And we are Fanny and Jesse. Jesse. So right about now, we're gonna do another reaction. But before we get into the reaction, guys, I wanna thank everybody for subscribing to our channel. You're the realest MVP, man. Let us get to 10,000 subscribers, and we're gonna be happy and happy. So right about now, we're gonna do another reaction. And this one right here was suggested by a lot of people, as usual. And they said that we should go react to Sangu destroys Zaki Naik's shark branding. Yeah, so without any further ado, let's get it. If the men go to heaven, they'll get 72 poor, that beautiful woman. What will the woman get? The same question was asked to Hazrat Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, who's the wife of the Prophet. So the wife of the Prophet replied that the woman will get that which your heart hasn't desired, what your eyes hasn't seen, what your ear hasn't heard about. So inshallah, if you go to heaven, you will get something good which inshallah you'll be satisfied. But the question is first you have to enter heaven. If you don't enter heaven, you won't get that something which is good. This happened in Alabama. A Sunday school teacher was going on full fire. Full fire he was going on in his rhetoric and he stopped and asked, what do you have to do to go to heaven? Little Tommy in the back bench stood up and said, you gotta die first. <laughs> you got to die first, that's a qualification. And when you die, if you have not done anything eco-friendly, one good thing you will do, we will either bury your body or burn your body or cut it and put it to the birds, depending on what culture you come from. You come to the fold of Islam, so that you go to paradise, you go to heaven, otherwise you don't go to heaven. So you left your body here and went to heaven. What is in heaven, you must know. You know what's in heaven? Oh, you must know you're going <laughs> In Hindu heaven, food is good. If you're a foodie, that's where you go. In another place, there are white-gowned ladies floating around in the clouds. If you like that kind of ambience, you go there. In another place, you'll encounter virgin problems. If that's what you're looking for, that's where you go. But one thing is, you left your body here and went to heaven. You don't have a body. What do you do with good food and virgins? <laughs> we believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We believe that he was the Messiah translated Christ. We believe that he was born miraculously without any male intervention, which many modern Christians today do not believe. We believe that he gave life to the dead with God's permission. It's become so much a part of our daily language, I believe this, I believe that, then I believe other things, everything. Belief essentially means you have concretized your assumptions about life and beyond. Seeking means you have realized that you do not know. I do not know is a tremendous possibility. Only when you see I do not know, the possibility of knowing becomes a living reality for you. I know any number of teachers around you are going about feeding you philosophies and explanations for everything that is not in your experience. People have been talking about gods and heavens and this and that with great confidence and authority. Have they seen? Are they talking about something they have seen? We believe that he healed those born blind and lepers with God's permission. If you talk about something which is not yet in your experience, to put it bluntly, you're just a bloody liar. That's what it means. But because lies are holy, lies are written in scriptures, lies are repeated by all kinds of people who are dressed in different ways, which are supposed to be holy though ridiculous. Because of this, you're not supposed to question these words. Anywhere you go, first thing is people say, Sadhguru, what about the soul? I ask them, which soul, right or left? <laughs> Once you start believing in something, 
which is not yet a reality for you, you are bound to be in conflict with somebody else because somebody else is bound to believe something else. No, 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 I believe in my God but I am not a violent person, I will not fight with anybody. All this is just makeup. If they provoke you sufficiently, you will fight. Religion is not about belief system. All religions started as a method to turn inward. The conflict in the world is not between good and evil, please see this. Though people always claim it is so, it is not true. It is always one man's belief versus another man's belief. But uh, because you are growing from a belief system, you are not willing to make the effort of going beyond what you have gathered from others and looking at life by yourself. That is why there is conflict. In yoga you may have to say certain things like Om and narrate and chant certain things. All these things may lead to shirk. That means you are calling somebody else as the creator besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Islam, as I mentioned in my talk, according to Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse 48 and Surah Nisa chapter 4 116, Allah will forgive any sin but the sin of shirk will never forgive. Shirk is associating partners with God. So if you associate anyone else with God, call anyone else God besides the true God Allah, then it is shirk. Shankaran Pillai went to Britannia. <laughs> Can I? Shankaran Pillai went to Britannia Industries to find a job, to find a job. So they were looking for a really smart, forcing sales manager. So they asked him one question, which is further, Mumbai or Moon? Shankaran Pillai thought. He said, Mumbai. He said, what? Mumbai is further than the Moon? He said, yes. How? Well, I can see the moon, I can't see Mumbai <laughs> It doesn't matter what you identify yourself with, it doesn't matter in which way you're brainwashed, but you must understand human mechanism is not your making, it is nature's doing. A profound understanding of that and how to bring that to its highest level is yoga. Every human being should make use of it irrespective of who they are. I refuse to recognize people as Muslims or Christians or Hindus, I see human beings as human beings. This is a technology for human well-being, let's understand that much. In the Surya Namaskar case, they don't uh, want the chanting at that time. There, there is no chant in Surya Namaskar, whoever is adding it. There is no life on this planet which is not solar powered. All of us are solar powered, whether it's a plant, animal, insect, bird or human being. Essentially, we are solar powered. If you manage this solar energy within you in a certain way, then you will live a certain quality of life. Whether you're a Hindu or a Muslim, you can't live without the sun. It's true. Now, Surya Namaskar is not about sun, wor sun worship as some people think it is. Surya Namaskar is about integrating the sun within you. So this Quran can be proved scientifically that the word of God. Because Quran, the word of God is far superior to science. Today, science is the yardstick for many of them. I'm not trying to take the help of science. I'm using your yardstick, science, along with my yardstick, the Quran, which is far superior. And I'm trying to prove to you what your yardstick has mentioned today, Quran has mentioned 14 years ago. So with the help of your yardstick, the science, I'm trying to prove to the non-Muslims that the Quran is the last and final revelation of Almighty God who we call as Allah. For more details, refer to my video cassette, Is the Quran God's Word? In which various ways I have proved that Quran is the Word of God. Most of the scriptures on the, on the planet cannot withstand two logical questions. If you ask two questions, it'll collapse. It can remain sacred and up there only as long as you prevent it from asking these questions. These questions are taboo, these questions are sacrilege, you're not supposed to ask them. Only as long as you do not ask these questions, they float in very sacred space. If you ask two questions, it'll collapse. When it comes to this about people not admitting their ignorance, because 
I think it is the nature of education, it is the way we have been conducting lots of things, where ignorance is considered a bad thing. Ignorance is a borderless thing, okay? Ignorance is a borderless reality. What you are yet to know is a limitless possibility. What you know is a tiny little thing. So you are identifying with the tiny little thing that you know and you are ignoring an immense possibility which you do not know. A constant admittance that I do not know so much about this existence is what makes you into an active, open intelligence. Otherwise, you will become… there are words which I don't want to use. What do you think? How do you think? Hmm? Did you enjoy this? No, um, first of all here, like, uh, no one was being destroyed. I think the, the title is kind of misleading here. Like, Sanguru destroys Zakir Naik. I mean, everybody was just giving out <clears throat> uh, good uh, statements to get information where it's either for you to take it in, or it's either for you to to let it slide, you get it? I mean, but there was some information that were given here that they they resonate with uh, what I know and probably not, not with what I believe in, you get it? So, I mean, Sanguru was, was, was kind of giving out information that are more realistic, uh, again, Zaki Naik was giving information that are relying on the on the Quran, which is okay. You get it. I mean, everyone was just spot on, on that. I mean, it's just an amazing um, information that was given out. What do you think? It was interesting. Really interesting. I actually thought they sat down together and spoke things. Yeah, I thought the same thing. It was just funny to watch. It was interesting. Very, very interesting. Just let us know. At the end of the day, everyone will believe whatever they want to believe, sir. Or the other one. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, people have their own beliefs, so you can't start arguing right now. Like, oh, this, this. everybody's gonna come up with their own beliefs. Just like just when Sanguru said, like the other mm -hmm. beliefs that when you go to heaven you get virgins, other ones when you go to heaven, I don't know something like when you go to heaven you get uh, you see gold and stuff like that. I mean, there's so many beliefs out there. So, I mean, people, it's it's so hard to come together and uh, and come to one understanding but all we believe we're all human at the end of the day exactly we're all humans we believe in one god and that is allah and uh, or maybe god you know god of christianity or god of hindu you get it we believe in one god at the end of the day there's only one heaven and one hell so you're going to go in in, in in one of those you get it so anyway guys, if you feel like you'd react to this video in a better way, just give us a thumbs up. And don't forget to go down in our comment section, tell us exactly what you feel about our reaction and what you feel about this video right here, Sanguru destroying Zakir Naik. Just let us know in the comment section below and we'd be really, really happy. And the most important thing guys, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. The more you keep, us, keep on subscribing, the more give us the motivation to do a lot of videos and to give you a better, better content. And last but not the least, we're going to see you in the next video and peace out.